If you've ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix, consider sending it my way by going to asthereavendreams.com and clicking the button to do so. And of course, thank you. Last week, I had something happen to me that I can't quite shake off. I mean, it was a super mundane thing, but it was also incredibly bizarre. I figured I would send it in, and you and your listeners can decide for yourself in the end. Maybe it was nothing. Maybe I'm crazy. Or maybe it was a glitch. It was a super hot afternoon, and as we do here, I had a major craving for some sweetened iced tea. I had a pitcher in the fridge that was just unsweetened iced tea, so I had to pour it and add some sugar to sweeten it, but that's no big deal. I poured a big glass, added some sugar, and stirred it up all nice, and then added a couple cubes of ice. Not going to lie, it was a work of art. I grabbed my tea, and before I could even take a sip, nature called probably the pouring of the liquid causing that reaction that we all seem to have. I went ahead and pulled a coaster from the stack on the coffee table and placed my glass down on it, and dashed off to the restroom. After I did my business, I walked over to the sink and washed my hands, and then started the routine of looking at my face for any imperfections and blemishes. That's when I noticed something strange. There was a mole on my neck that I had never seen before. It wasn't huge or anything, but it was decently sized, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't there prior. I rubbed it with my finger thinking maybe it was something on my skin or something, but it was definitely there, and definitely a mole. Now, this in and of itself isn't too odd, that happens, right? Like, moles can randomly appear in places they never were, I think. I shook off my curiosity, and I left the bathroom thinking it was just a thing that happened. I walked out into my living room and went to grab my iced tea, and to my confusion, it wasn't there on the table. I stared, confused, and a little alarmed that someone may have broken into my house and stolen my tea? Yeah, a weird thing to consider, but it was definitely gone. I looked around the room at all the possible surfaces where I could have put it, but nope, no tea. I thought that maybe I had brought it with me into the bathroom, which is something that I would never do, but it clearly was not in the living room. Of course, I checked, but no, no tea there either. Feeling a bit frazzled, I went back to the kitchen thinking maybe I just left it in there and didn't realize it. And sure enough, my cup was on the kitchen counter. But the cup was completely empty and dry, and the pitcher was full to the brim. It was as if I had never poured the glass of tea at all. I just stood there frozen, trying to make sense of what had just happened. Had I imagined pouring the tea? Had my actions somehow been reset or undone? I glanced up at the window and saw my reflection, once again noticing that mole on my neck. And honestly, a chill went down my spine. This was a really small glitch, but the two things going together like this, within a few minutes, it was kind of creepy for me. Nothing else feels different. And yet I can't shake that feeling that something inexplicable happened in those very brief moments. But again, I don't know. I don't know what this was. Did something happen while I was in the bathroom? Did I jump timelines or realities or whatever you call it? Everything else is as it always has been, but these two little things were just so weird to me. This happened a while back, 
sometime during the summer of 2021. I always thought this event was pretty weird, but only skimming through this subreddit a bit made me realize how much of a glitch it was. So, at the time of this event, I was living in Vienna in a student dormitory. It was getting time for me to renew my prescription for my eyeglasses, so I looked around for a place to do that. Turns out, there's one optical store just around the corner from me. I made an appointment and went in for an eye exam. I showed up and said hello. The guy at the front desk seemed very confused that I would be there, even though we had talked on the phone about me coming. And that was only the day before. Hm, whatever, I thought. The actual exam took place in a back room, and the doctor examining me was this short, stocky gentleman with a distinct Farsi accent. I know because I have a lot of Persian friends since childhood. I pick up on that sound intuitively at this point. Everything goes well. I get my prescription, or I don't. Only at the very end do I realize that doctor never gave me the paper slip with my numbers on them. I tried noting them down from memory since he clearly showed me everything on his computer monitor, but I wanted to make sure. So, I walked into the same place the next morning to ask for a copy. I walk in, and this time it's a much older, taller guy at the front desk who answers me. I give him my name and tell him what happened, and he types away at his computer for maybe a solid minute. I thought, well, that's a bit long considering I didn't ask him to do anything special, but whatever. Then he calls someone else from the back. They whisper to each other. They stare at the monitor for another minute. I almost felt like they were suspecting me of, well, something, by the way they were acting about it all. Uh, well, sir, it seems like you haven't been here before. Excuse me? You have not been a customer of ours according to our database. Well, obviously there's a mistake. Just let me talk to the doctor who examined me yesterday. He will know what I need. I was very confused at this point, but oh well. Maybe the new, old guy at the front desk had simply messed up. There's no way the doctor wouldn't recognize me. I was even wearing the same color shirt as the day before. The old guy by the entrance was so kind and strangely official in asking all the store's ODs to come and line up for me for a second. There weren't that many, of course. It was a small store, maybe five people, and my guy, the short, bronze-skinned guy with the Farsi accent, was so obviously not among them. It was all tall, younger-looking, white, Austrian doctors with Viennese accents. I was really confused. I asked the guy from the front desk what was going on if the doctor I had just seen had just spontaneously decided to take a day off. He typed away for a moment, and then just bluntly told me, no. I have no idea if that was no he didn't, or no he doesn't exist. I was feeling totally weirded out by this interaction, so I just jumped ahead and asked if I could resolve this confusion by just redoing my eye exam here. With a very fake smile, he leaned over to me and said, My apologies, but at the moment, we're fully booked, and we can't take on new appointments for such things. I suggest you try one of our other locations. Now, I know that this was not true, because the younger guy that I had been talking on the phone with told me, and showed me via their website, that appointments for eye exams there are only a courtesy thing. They have a company policy that they're always free, and there's like 50 time slots available for each day, so they basically never fill up. On the day that I came, I was free to choose any time from, I think, 10.15 in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon, or something like that, so that they would be suddenly fully booked is a bit silly. I felt like telling that to this guy, but... I wasn't in the mood for an argument. I could tell that they were about to shoo me out for reasons that I couldn't grasp, so 
I just left. I still think about this from time to time, and it keeps feeling weirder every time. I know it's not nearly as out there as some of the other experiences that others have shared here, but it's mine, and I thought it was still pretty interesting. As the title says, I somehow split into two. This happened at my mom's house. I was around 16 at the time, as were my friends. I was hanging out with a couple of my friends in the computer room of my mom's house, around 2006-ish. None of my friends had consistent, unsupervised internet access, so we would sit in the room with my mom's PC at all hours, doing whatever a bunch of nerdy teenage anime video game fangirls would do. The door next to the computer led to two rooms. Directly across was my mom's room, she wasn't home, and right around the corner was the bathroom. It wasn't a hallway, but more like a section of doors with the dining room next to it, and then the door to the kitchen at the left of the dining room, and an open living room to the right. The three of us were sitting at the computer desk, two in chairs and one sitting on the floor. I got up to use the bathroom, leaving both of my friends sitting in the chairs with the door fully in view. When I was leaving the bathroom, I was about to go back into the computer room, but I also wanted to go to the kitchen to grab a snack for us. As I exited the door, it was like I made both decisions at the same time. I felt tired all of a sudden, and I had tunnel vision with like a visual snow effect. I remember turning towards the door, but at the same time walking through the dining room. I'm not sure how to explain it, but my vision split, seeing both directions when I moved. Then the visual snow got heavier for a moment, and when I snapped out of it, I was standing in the kitchen holding the house phone, as if I was going to call someone. There isn't a single person that I would be calling around midnight. I shook my head and rubbed my eyes while I put the phone back down. As I walked back into the room that my friends were in, they asked what the hell that was, and how I did it. They saw me standing in the doorway for several minutes, no expression on my face. They didn't acknowledge me at first, and then eventually asked if I'm okay. I continued to silently stare at them. My friends said that it looked like me, but not at the same time. I was taller and my clothes were slightly different. This entity turned around and walked away around the corner, and I walked in passing through it or something. The lights were off in the dining room, so it appeared like I went around the corner and then immediately came back in the doorway. Somehow, I was standing in the doorway staring down my friends, and at the same time in the kitchen, holding the house phone for no reason that I can fathom. I guess I tried to do both things I was considering when leaving the bathroom, but ended up standing around like an NPC in both situations. I did forget to grab a snack for us, though. We all ended up going to my bedroom in the converted attic. The door to it was at the back of the computer room, because all three of us were too creeped out to stay downstairs. I started listening to these Glitch in the Matrix stories, and it made me remember something from my childhood that I'd almost forgotten about. I was about 13 and would ride my bike up and down various streets in my neighborhood. One street that I would often ride on was a small dead-end road. There were several houses on it, and a small parking lot that belonged to an equally small factory that was across the street from it. The factory was closed down, so there were no cars in the parking lot. I used to ride to that street and circle around in the parking area before going back towards home. One day, 
I was circling in the lot, and I heard someone call my name. I don't have a very common name, so it had to be me they were calling, and not someone else. I stopped my bike and turned to see a girl about the same age as me. She excitedly called my name again and told me her name, asking if I remembered her. I could only look at her confused because I didn't know who this person was. She asked if I didn't remember her and I said no. She proceeded to tell me that we went to grade school together, told me what school and what grade we had been in together. She told me things that we used to do together and all the fun that we used to have and I could do nothing but stand and stare at her because nothing, absolutely nothing, rang a bell in my head. The school we'd both gone to was correct, and I remembered the teacher she mentioned, but I could recall nothing of the things that she said we had done together. I'll be the first person to admit that I'm terrible at remembering names at times, but I should have remembered her face, if nothing else and she did not look familiar at all. I felt bad as she kept talking about things that we had done while I stood there hoping something would click in my brain, and I would just suddenly go, oh yeah, I remember, but nothing ever did. And finally, I just said sorry, but I just didn't remember any of it, and she seemed rather defeated. With nothing else to do, I just turned around and biked back home. For several years, I often revisited that memory and would try to remember the things that she said we did together, but my mind was always blank. Then, as I got older, the memory faded, but it remained somewhere in the back of my mind and was then brought back when I started listening to other glitch stories. Was this girl possibly from an alternate reality? In some other world, had we been good friends, but... Here, I just didn't know her at all. I never saw her again after that, although that could simply be because I wasn't looking for her when I rode my bike down that road, and if she saw me, she probably would not have called out to me again. Why bother if I didn't remember her after all? But now, I wonder. Did I totally blank out of my memory someone I had apparently been good friends with? despite having memories of other kids from that same time frame, and even younger, and even many years later I can still recall? Or did I experience a glitch in the Matrix before it was even a thing? I saw a bunch of people mentioning their experiences with glitches in the Matrix, and I don't know if that's what I experienced, but it seems to be on brand with what I've read here. It started a few days ago. I was sitting on my couch watching TV when I heard a dog barking outside. I glanced over at my living room window and saw a husky running past, followed by a skinny kid. I'm guessing that was the owner running behind him, the leash dragging on the ground. I looked back at the TV to continue watching my show, but then I heard it again. I expected to see the same scene, but reversed with the dog running back the way it came, but it was the same as before, from left to right. It had only been a few seconds since I glanced back at the TV. Hmm, they must have been running in circles, I thought. I glanced back at the TV confused, and it happened again. The same dog barking, running from left to right, the same kid running after him. It was like I was in some kind of time loop, but watching it from the outside looking in. This went on for about five, ten minutes, confused as hell. I tried to ignore it, and then I noticed that my TV was repeating the same short scene every few seconds or so. Like I had just kept hitting the rewind button on the remote. It was almost 3.40 by this point, which was also odd, once I started thinking about it. I had been watching the show for about half an hour. The show started at 3.15, but the clock said it was 
I watched the clock for another minute or two, and it never moved. I swear I stared at it for ten minutes. The dog was still barking outside. Nothing. It never switched over to 334. At this point, I'm freaked out. I check my phone. Sure enough, 333. All of the clocks visible to me read 333, no matter what time it actually was. Which, at that moment, I had no idea what time it really was. I decided to call my girlfriend while she was at work to see if she was experiencing the same thing. But when she picked up after only one ring, she kept repeating the same hey in the same tone over and over again. Not knowing what to do, I freaked out and hung up. I threw my phone across the room and it hit the wall hard. After a few seconds, the show finally pressed on, after seeing that same car crash 40,000 times. Or at least that's what it felt like. And after a few more seconds, there was no barking. I glanced out the window and it was finally starting to get dark. I got up and walked over to the other side of the room to get my phone. Luckily, it wasn't cracked. I called my girlfriend again, and she answered after a few rings. She was back to normal as well. I asked if she felt off at all, and she said that she didn't know what I was referring to. I just said that I loved her and then hung up. That, like I said, was a few days ago. And for those few days, everything was back to normal. Or at least I thought it was. I don't know what happened, but when I woke up this morning, I felt like I'd been in bed for days. I was sore, and my girlfriend, even though it was her day off, turned out to be at work. She said that I knew it was Thursday and that she always works the mornings on Thursdays. I fell asleep on Monday night. I decided to check the indoor ring camera that I have set up in the bedroom, just in case someone tries to rob the place. Or maybe I had this desire to catch an occasional ghost on camera. I don't know. But as I'm skimming through the footage, I notice that at exactly 3.33 a.m., the camera glitches. And after a few seconds, it does it again, playing the same five seconds on loop. The player still let me scrub through as if time was passing, and I held down the forward button and I watched as the loop just went on for what seemed like days. Did I really sleep for three whole days? What the hell is happening? I spent that day paranoid, hoping that when 3.33pm rolled around that I wasn't stuck on some endless loop. But it came and went. I dreaded that night as well, so I actually stayed up until 3.33 in the morning to see if it would happen again, but time just went on like it always had. Fast forward to right now as I'm writing this, and there hasn't been as much as a hiccup. I have no clue what could have happened, but everything from this sub makes me think that I had some kind of weird glitch in the Matrix experience. To begin with, this story is real, and I'm 100% sure that it did happen. I wasn't dreaming or in a daze. For context, I work at a petrol station in the UK as a member of staff for the night shift on this particular late Saturday night. So, on with the story. The shift started off all the same as they did previously, quiet and extremely cold, when an old woman came into the shop. I thought to myself, that was a little bit odd, considering it was just about to turn midnight, and we don't get many elderly people turning up at this time of night, in all of my years working there. But I shrugged it off, thinking that she probably ran out of milk or something. I started to check the stock when I saw her pick up a small basket and make her way through the crisps and sweets aisle. I thought, oh, she probably fancies some snacks when all of a sudden, she disappears. I kid you not, she vanished into literal thin air. 
and the shop went even more cold and eerie than it was before she even arrived. I decided to look around the shop, in between aisles to see if she was looking at another section, but she was gone. I went back to the cashier desk when I see a single bag of crisps fall on the floor. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, and I had this cold shiver run down my spine. I went to go and pick them up, and when I went to put them back on the shelf that they fell off of, the whole entire shelf was empty. I was in absolute shock. I blinked really hard to see if I was seeing this correctly. How on earth did everything vanish? I said aloud. I seriously started to become freaked out, so I went outside to see if it was some sort of joke, like teens messing around, but it was as silent as ever. In the distance, I saw that same elderly lady as she stood there with literal black eyes, and it gave me the most spine-tingling wave I have ever had. And since that day, I have never felt the same. Hey Raven, just thought I would send you the first glitch that made me think there was more to this all than it appeared to be. I've experienced glitches my entire life. The first one I can recall was when I was less than 10 years old. I relived a dream where everything happened exactly the way that I dreamed it. This wasn't the last time that kind of glitch happened to me either. I've also dropped more things than I can remember that have disappeared before they even hit the ground. To me, this is just normal, and somewhat annoying. Give me my stuff back. This story is more significant to me than any of those, because it hints that maybe we have more control over the glitches than we may think. I used to collect comic book related trading cards back in the 90s. Any extra I would give to my friend, who is now my roommate. One day when I went to visit him, he said that he lost the three very rare hologram cards that I had given him the day before. He said he left them on the back part of the couch, and they disappeared. Of course, I asked if he checked behind the couch. He said that he pulled the couch completely away from the wall and just nothing. They just vanished. I told him that the cards are there now, and to look again. I simply believed without a doubt in my mind that they would be there. It took a little convincing, but he looked, and there they were. To this day, he thinks that I brought them back. I later become his roommate in that place, and had a rare Japanese trading card disappear when it fell between my bed and the wall. Even when we were moving out, it was nowhere to be found. I wish remanifesting would work on that card, also. This happened three days ago, and I'm still bothered by it. So, I had used my AirPods on a walk, and upon returning home, I put them on the charger in my kitchen. Later, while making dinner, I disconnected my AirPods to plug in my iPad, leaving my AirPods on the kitchen counter. After dinner, I was putting laundry away in my walk-in closet with my infant, not yet walking, sitting on the floor playing. Note, she never left my side. I noticed that the bottom drawer of our filing cabinet was ajar, which I hardly go into, and my AirPods case was sitting on the bottom of the drawer. I rushed to the kitchen where I remember leaving my AirPods, and they're not there. I don't remember going into my bedroom at all until I started putting away laundry. I rack my brain trying to explain how my AirPods could have made their way into a drawer that I seldom go into without me remembering putting them there. Even more strange, when I open the case, my left AirPod is missing. I had just had both of them about an hour prior when they were on my charger. How could I suddenly be missing one? 
I start tearing apart the cabinet, but I cannot find the AirPod anywhere. I put the baby to bed, and I try to find the missing AirPod using Find My, but it won't connect. I try multiple troubleshooting tips, but cannot connect to the missing AirPod, only the one that I have. I gave up my search after about an hour, and I tried to relax with TV before bed. I still cannot figure out how my AirPod made it into the cabinet from the kitchen, and how did I lose one? I start wondering if the baby may have gotten a hold of it. Did she swallow it? But she was sitting right next to me the whole time, and she was never in that drawer, and I never saw her with an AirPod. But where could it be? So I decided to go to bed. I walk into my room to my side of the bed, and there in the middle of the floor in front of my nightstand is my missing left AirPod. Now, I had not set foot in that part of the room since I had gotten up for the day that morning. The baby had not been in that part of the room either. No one was in that part of my bedroom all day, including myself. This part of the room is a good 20 feet away from the filing cabinet in my closet, with a large bed in between. How on earth did my AirPod get there? And sure enough, I could now connect Find My to the missing left AirPod, where before I couldn't. I try shaking the AirPod case upside down to see if the AirPods can fall out somehow, but they're held in magnetically. I have no explanation for this. Hi, it's me again. So, I did want to first say that I had never told anyone else my story of my stalker from my old job, just Raven, saying that because I'd seen comments asking. Anyways, here's my glitch story. It's nothing big, just really odd. So, every night when I'm getting my girls ready from bed, my youngest gets a bottle of oat milk. I always ask beforehand because sometimes she changes her mind. She said that she wanted strawberry milk, so I said sure, as long as she brushed her teeth after. I sat her on the counter and we put the powder in the milk and popped it into the microwave for about 45 seconds. It went off, I grabbed it, shook it up, and then I picked her up and proceeded to walk towards their bedroom, making sure to grab a diaper to change her before she went to sleep for the night. But when I got to the room, the milk was gone. I had it, and her in my hand, when I grabbed the diaper because I had spilled a little bending down to get it. I go back by the diapers thinking, okay, maybe I left it when I spilled it down my arm a bit. Nope, not there. I look in the room to see if maybe she grabbed it, but she was just sitting there. So I go back into the kitchen, and it's still there in the microwave, unmixed. It freaked me out because I knew that I picked her up after we mixed it. It even spilled down my arm, so how did it end up back in the microwave? I have zero explanation for this. Maybe I was just tired, I don't know, but the only thing I could think of was the milk glitches. But let me know what you guys all think. So that, my friends, was a collection of some genuinely crazy Glitch in the Matrix stories. Some really bizarre ones, and honestly, kind of creepy ones in this collection, so... It was a good collection in my eyes. In my eyes. In my eyes, is what I said there. Eyes. Anyways. Uh, really strange stories. Glitch stories are always strange, though, right? They're never normal stuff. They're just some weird, strange, creepy things that happen. And I love them. If I didn't love them, I wouldn't do them weekly, right? That's what I have to say about that. Yeah. Hopefully you love them, too. Based on the views and the people that comment, I have to assume you mostly do. So, um, Yeah, if you did 
like these stories and would like to hear more, consider hitting the thumbs up button, as that tells me that these stories are some of your favorites, or stories that you enjoy, and that means I'll keep doing them. As if I would ever stop. Um, <laughs> if you liked what you heard and want more stories like this, which I already just said, you can subscribe to the channel, that's the other thing you can do. And that tells me that I'm doing well. It really does. Um, you can join Patreon or memberships for early access to content like this as long as it gets up early. You can also do a super thanks, which is just a tip to the channel, a way of saying thank you, a little bit extra support, never, ever expected, but always, always appreciated. Now, the last thing you can do on this glitch video, this glitch Monday video, whatever you want to call it, is what we call the word of the week. On the word of the week, you, no, I, give you a word that you guys gave me a while back, and then you take the word that I give you to create a sentence in the comments section, and then I take those word sentences from you and put them on the screen so you can see them. Get how it works? It's a two-way system. Anyways, on the screen now and several moments prior to now, probably while I was given that roundabout description of what this is, is a collection of all the comments that were left for me with the word of the week. A lot of you submitted comments last week. Thank you so very much. The more that you guys submit comments, the harder it gets for me to put them all on the screen. And honestly, that's a fantastic problem to have. So, yeah. A huge thank you again to each and every single one of you. You are amazing. You went above and beyond. Thank you again. Now, this week's word of the week is one that I will neglect to mention. If you haven't figured it out, it's the word neglect. N-E-G-L-E-C-T, which is one of the most fun words to spell as you say it. Neglect. It's, it's a fun word that reminds me of lizards for some reason, and I don't know why. But anyways, um, means to give little attention or respect to or disregard, to leave undone or unattended to, especially through carelessness or the act or instance of neglecting something. Neglect, neglect. Again, why does it remind me of lizards? Anyways. I hope you all have a beautiful day, and I hope that we'll see you again here very soon. But until then, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you're the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and do not let anyone tell you otherwise. And until I see you again, my beautiful friend, much love, and sleep well.